Welcome back everyone, Nick and Lex here. Thank you so much for joining me today to this new episode of Music with Nick. Today we got a new band that I'm going to react to. This is a request by Darius. Thank you so much Darius for, you know, sponsoring the video, um, making the video happen. I appreciate it. And yes, very short um, description, uh, pretty much no description at all. Um, we're talking about the band Glencoe. I did have to look up the name uh, if I was pronouncing it correctly. And we're going to do the song Airport. Um, again, thank you, Darius, so much for sponsoring this. Give me one moment. I'm going to pull up the song and we'll get into it. All right. So here's some more information. And now that I pulled up the song, this is from the album Questions. And... Uh, I was like, and then I looked at the cover and I was like, wow, this looks very 70. And I'm like, whoa, 2024? No, definitely wrong. So I did a little Google search. So this came out in 1972. So, um, uh, yeah, there's not a lot of information even on the Internet about this band. Um, I don't know why, but hey, it doesn't matter. Um, I'm sure it's going to be good. Or maybe not, you know, sometimes, you know, I, I can't just say it's going to be good. I hope it's good. Um, But it, I, a little bit of information for people that have never heard of this band. It says, Glencoe emerged from the ashes of Scottish progressive rock band Forevermore after Alan Gorey and Annie McLintry, I'm sorry if I'm mispronouncing, left in 1971 to form the Average White Band. Okay, all right, so those do sound familiar. The remaining duo of Mick Travis and Stuart Francis from Glencoe with Graham Maitland and Norman Watt Roy. There you go. So it's progressive rock, and there's they're even on Prog Archives. Let's see. Do they have more than one album? It looks like they do came out with the Spirit of Glencoe in 1973. All right. And this Glencoe uh, questions was just called Glencoe for some reason. And now they did. Uh, so, oh, okay. So they might have done a re-release and now they call it questions, right? That could be the, the case. Uh, now, if if you, for example, say, well, I don't know anything about questions at all, uh, that's what they call it here on, on Spotify when you look up the song Airport. So maybe this was just called Glencoe, and then they called it, they renamed the album Questions, but it doesn't show up on Google. So let's get into it. Again, thank you so much uh, for sponsoring this Um uh, Darius, uh, by the way, I love that name because uh, there's well, I don't really, I don't really have to explain why. But if you if you're into uh, pop culture, you will know why. All right, so here we go with Airport Glencoe. Thank you so much. Enjoy. <laughs> Oh, yeah. 
very powerful stuff. Um, uh, sorry about that. Very, very cool. Like, um, it has that prog, you know, like that 70s prog, but it, it sounds more like, um, like deep purple rainbow, that kind of like, almost like leaning towards like, you know, going into like that heavy metal, you know, direction, but it's still clearly like 70s rock with, you know, influences of classical music and jazz. I love the keyboard, the sound of that keyboard, that distorted keyboard, you know, really, really cool. I love the that they were harmonizing the entire time. The drumming was obviously sounds like a jazz drummer, you know, um, playing rock and it's just like you hear it, you know, there's so much going on. And, um, and also the guitar really cool, like cry baby there, wah, wah pedal, you know, and, uh, the whole thing really moved, like really moved, you know, you really, you're like, okay, <laughs> like, I don't know. It's just very good. Um, yeah, it looks like they only released two bands, so it's not really like a band that, you know, lived like an amazing success. But hey, it just happens. There's so many bands that have s such good, you know, songs and or maybe, you know, they have like one hit and then unfortunately it didn't really work out, you know. But man, this is a good project. This is a great musical uh, sound to them. And yes, like when I say, you know, Deep Purple, obviously because Deep Purple had that sound, you know, that very heavy keyboard sound. And, um, but yeah, th I mean, they, they do sound different. I, for some reason I was thinking about like, because of the harmonies of Kansas, you know, a little bit, but Kansas has a completely different sound from this. Uh, I like the heaviness. It was really, you know, kind of like, um, yeah, like, and I I want to be careful with the word metal because a lot of people misinterpret that. But when I say metal, uh, I'm leaning towards, you know, 70s, like hard rock, like Deep Purple and Black Sabbath and maybe like Iron Butterfly, Uriah Heep. That is consider considered heavy metal music. Um, and then, yes, of course, I know there's all these other metal bands that and then throughout the 70s and 80s, you know, and 90s. Even now, it just became, you know, a little bit heavier. But there's also metal bands that still play like this to this day. So there's just, you know, the the word uh, metal gets kind of like misinterpreted. And a lot of people are even like, yeah, I don't listen to metal. And clearly they do like the genre, you know, they just like don't consider it metal. Like Led Zeppelin, you know, <laughs> Led Zeppelin has always said, we're not metal, but when they clearly are, they're like the inventors of the genre, you know, but this was really fun. I really enjoyed this. And, uh, um, I'm happy, you know, that there's this new band on the channel that people can listen to. Maybe it's going to be a new discovery for them, you know, because when a band only releases one or two albums, that's the problem that there might be some like, Hey, you know, I don't really know this, you know, but they are on Spotify. If you want to check them out, if you want to release them. So here questions, which is the 1972 release was just re-released as a 2024 album. So that's kind of funny. So they used to be called Glen Co and now it's released as questions in 2024. So that's kind of neat, you know, that they're, uh, being kind of like putting, put back on the map. Now, the other one, the spirit of Glencoe that came out in 2016 as a re-release, but we know that that originally came out also in the seventies. Right. So, um, so yeah, there's not a lot of information here on Prague archives. They gave it a three, uh, out of five. Right. And there's only one review and, um, well, I don't know. He has, you know, some really good things to say, but unfortunately, there's not that much information. But this is where you guys come in. You guys are the pros. You know, you guys are the ones that grew up with this progressive stuff. You know, Iron Butterfly and Uriah Heep and Yes and Genesis and all this, you know, uh, metal stuff or 70s hard rock, you know. So you let me know what did you think of this? Like, this is something. Uh, did you ever hear it before? Is this your first time? And then now hearing it. Um, uh, this is music that came out when you guys were, you know, in your younger days, in your teens or in your twenties or even younger. So, um, what do you, what did you think? You know, I think it's always 
cool to hear something, you know, um, even not, not that well known. And uh, but now, you know, that, and then there's bands um, that play like this. Like, I think the one that comes to my mind the most would be um, Greta Van Fleet. And even though they have kind of like, you know, said that they don't really sound like Led Zeppelin, of course they do, you know, but I think, uh, but I don't, don't have a problem with it. I know Led Zeppelin very, very well, and I love Led Zeppelin, and I can always listen to Led Zeppelin. And when I put on Greta Van Fleet, yes, it's almost like a carbon copy, but I think, you know, um, whatever man you know it's just some kids making music and it sounds a lot like led zeppelin but hey you know we only got so many led zeppelin albums so i think listening to them is i know i think like a passing on the torch i mean even robert plant said yeah there's this kid who sings just like me <laughs> you know and even though you know the guys from greta van fleet kind of like say no 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 we're inspired by the rolling stones and it's clearly like they dress like Led Zeppelin. They the drums sound like John Bonham. The bass sounds like John Paul Jones, and so forth. You know, everything sounds like Led Zeppelin. But you know, so that's a, I I like bands that do come out and sound like a seventies band right now in you know twenty twenties. So um, that's why I'm talking about this so much. But yeah. This is definitely from back in the day. So, uh, but I really liked it. Let me guys, uh, let me let me know, guys, what you thought of this. Have you uh, have you ever heard this before? Um, are you like secretly a, a Glencoe fan? Were you always, you know, uh, aware of this band, or is it like a new thing, a new band that you're listening to right now here on the channel? Let me know. Um, and yeah, let's talk about it. Thank you so much, Darius, for this request. I really appreciate, you know, just guys, um, or, or gals, you know, coming up with this new stuff. Like, Hey, have you heard, have you ever heard this before? You know? And I'm like, Whoa, you know, it was really, really good. Like really great musicianship, great rhythm, great, you know, the voice, um, and also like technical wise, you know, but yeah, it did remind me, um, more of hard rock than progressive rock. It wasn't as proggy, you know, but again, it's also like, for example, Alexia now, when she listens to any sort of music, she wants like that progressive nature of music that we listen to in almost all of our reactions. She, she doesn't, she gets kind of like, I don't want to say bored, but it is kind of like, you know, you have to move on. Like, give me more. Give me more surprises. And that is something that is because she's just de developed now this taste for music that's surprising, that's a little bit more challenging and more hard, you know, to to, to play. And, but also when you listen to it, it's kind of harder to, you know. So something that is just in 4-4 four, four and uh, is has just one you know, the intro and then the chorus and, and then it's over and then the chorus gets played for two minutes. That's when she kind of like checks out. Now, I've just noticed this, that she's just developed this, you know, this new taste that if something is too, um, you know, straightforward, she kind of like, she's like, well, you know, I, it's okay, but I really want some more. I want, it's kind of funny to see that now in her because you know, that's why we decide to, to listen to progressive rock and not just rock and roll, you know, because we want that extension of we want those musicians to go further and, you know, deeper into uh, territories that are usually untouched. You know, when it's just for uh, straightforward rock, they don't play an 18 minute you know, guitar solo or, you know, and that's what we like, you know, so, but yeah, this was awesome. Thank you so much, Darius. I really appreciate it. Like I said, thank you for sponsoring the video. Please let us know what you, um, what you guys think in the comment section. Um, maybe there's some surprise reactions there. Thank you so much. And I'll see you all in the next one.